Welcome to Open the Gate. Tonight, my super guest is very excited, and also she's just the simple and very famous Diane Perney. So, Diane, I'm a bit confused because uh, you've been through a lot, and uh, you come from far, and there is many steps before you arrive where you are now. Uh, I know that you've been a designer, that you've been a photographer, now you're a very famous blogger, but I know there is many things between all those steps. Can you tell us more about it, please? Sure. Um, well, how far back do we want to go? Mm. <laughs> let's, you too. Let's see. Okay. Um, my degree is in filmmaking, and I was I went to a school where documentaries was the main thing. So of course I was into fiction, <laughs> but then I got back to documentaries. Um, I moved to New York. I became a uh, photographer, reportage photographer, not fashion. And then I became a. Fa I went to school for nine months, Parsons and FIT. And then I decided if I really wanted to stay in fashion, I would have to quit immediately because <laughs> I was losing all interest because it was very regimented. And that's not really the way I thought. So I started my own collection, but I really had no idea what I was doing. I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know like you're supposed to show six months in advance of when you deliver. Mm -hmm. And I would like show spring in March. <laughs> and the stores bought it because I didn't know how to price. So <laughs> I, was <like laughs> I was actually paying to sell to them. But uh, it, it went like amazingly easy in the beginning because probably it was just a matter of growing up in public. And um, then I, t I had my own business for 13 years. Okay. So I guess I must have learned somewhere along the line. And it was in New York, and then I moved um, in the end of 1990 to Paris. Absolutely no strategy whatsoever. <laughs> but I was supposedly going to be a costume designer for a film by Amos Kutai okay. called Gullen Res Redexia. But when I saw him, then what did I do? It was very hard the first three years in Paris, just surviving you know, having been kind of big face in, in New York and starting from nowhere. But I got a job with CBC, like assisting the producer. I was highly overqualified, which she knew, but I didn't care. And then um, from that, I think I became fashion editor for Joyce Ma. I was the first one that brought um, like Belgian designers to Hong mm -hmm. Kong N and Italians like Armani and Demi Le Mester, Dries Van Oet, and Martin Magella, all those people. And I did that for like four and a half years. I was the entire Paris office. Then from there, I think I went to L.com. Digital, I, finally. Yes. <laughs> and that was like in 2000. Okay. Or 2001. 2000, I think. I don't know. So the very beginning of internet. The big boom. Yeah, yeah. And I had been, oh, before that, or at the same time, I was working with this guy, Alex Chetvertinsky, who had a production company called Disciple Films Okay. because I was trying to teach myself how to edit and uh, I was having a hard time and I went on one and I used to ask this friend of mine, one of my dearest friends who actually bought me the computer with the software of Final Cut Pro and all <laughs> and I was asking him a million questions he was like, you know, there's this forum for Final Cut Pro users <laughs> and someone somewhere in the world at any hour can answer your questions. <laughs> So I'd had all these videos I'd made, like of Bernard Wilhelm and all these people, but I didn't edit them because I was didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. So we started working together, and we worked together for like five years making films, and did something for Gallery Lafayette. It was kind of great, called Fashioned Out. Yeah. Because you know when you go to all the shows, you're fashioned out, <laughs> and so that's why we called it. And it was like the first couple days of doing it for this first day of doing it, I had asked Jill Dufour, you know, he used to be the right hand of Carl for, I don't know, 17 years, if I could interview him, because I wanted to do something for him. I know I had left, and it was kind of a bad moment. Okay. And he said, oh, and he was doing something with Andre at the time, just Andre did all his drawings. Okay. And, um, and that was kind of the exhibition, he goes, Okay, come back at 6 o'clock. I'll give you the interview with Catherine Deneuve. 
So, of course, I waited around. I left Teresa Van Noten right before the show started. They were, like, horrified. But it, it was so late, and I thought, even if I have to wait for two hours... Yeah, of course. ...for Catherine, I have to do that. I, you know... Could I you feel at this time it was, like, a, a precious uh, object that you had in your mind that you could, like, make a big uh, boom out of it? Well, I was having fun. Yeah. I wasn't really... St I've never been very strategic. Okay. <laughs> it's always... I'm more organic about things. Okay. But I knew, like, um, Catherine Deneuve, like, remember Yergi Persons? Yes, very well. He's a really great designer. Yeah. I love his work. Well, he had a show, I think it was his last show at Gallery Lafayette. Mm -hmm. And it was the same moment that we had the windows, because what we did, there were three guys that were like 25 years old, and me, not 25. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we would like, we would work all day making like sound bites, funny things, little clips from runways, but mm -hmm. that was m minor. And um, at night we'd edit it, I'd do voiceovers like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And by 9 o'clock in the morning, it was in the windows of Gallery Lafayette. So, so it was cool. in the window of Gallery Lafayette. And we stayed there like three weeks. It was like every day. That was the first time. The second time we did three countries. And then um, in February 2005, I started my blog because there's this girl, Anina, anina.net, doesn't know much about fashion, but she's really tech savvy. And she asked me if um, I would consider using this new software called um, Life Blogging. Okay. And it was very new at the time. In the beginning, it's like, you know, a blog is like a monster. You have to feed it every day. Yeah. You can't go <laughs> to sleep without putting something new on. And in the beginning, it was all kind of, um, it was just my voice. And then I started thinking, I, you know, it's, it's, one, it's a huge thing to be filling this every day. And two, I'm getting sick of hearing my own voice. <laughs> so <laughs> and three, I'm getting invited everywhere, mm -hmm. but I can't go everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a limit to mm -hmm. what you can do. Physically endure. also and mentally. Yeah. yeah. And then I was on a plane nonstop. Mm. And then I started meeting people in different, in different countries, on different trips. People would share a similar vision, and I'd say, how would you like to be a correspondent? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I send them on trips instead of me. Oh, good. And they're very happy. You how know, much I've people do you have in this uh, correspondent team? Well, I'm going to reduce it a bit because there's going to be a new website. It should <gasps> open tomorrow, but I'm not sure that it actually will. <laughs> <laughs> but we've been working on it for two and a half years. It's a third set of web designers, and I love these guys. Silva a Silva. new website. Yeah, and it's going to combine the blog with the film festival. Excellent. Because originally the film festival was a satellite of the blog, and now the mm -hmm. blog is kind of a satellite of the festival. So you are directing this old blog, and in 2005, mm -hmm. like you were saying, you started the film festival, which is like um, an opening for young designers that yeah. are dealing with fashion and art and movie to create a, a beautiful uh, film and yeah. to present it into your festival. How much people do you have that wants to be a part of this festival? Um, there were like 600 applications okay. for films. And you select only? And I selected for the actual competition about 80. 80, okay. Cool. And then there was, uh, and I got people saying things like, you know, I think you should reconsider this rejection. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Can you imagine? Because they really, ATR really wanted to be in it. Of course. And it's like, yeah, but I have reconsidered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I watch every single film. Yeah. But um, y you asked me how many contributors to the blog. Mm -hmm. The ones that will move over to the new site will be about 40. Okay, wow. But there were m probably about 80. <sighs> Not that they contribute all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They contribute whenever they want. Yeah, yeah. You know, I the way I work with my contributors is when you have something to say, you say it. There's yeah, no yeah, obligation. Yeah. There's no anything. And also, then, like, I mean, also this project that you have, and now this new website that's going to gather the two babies that you have, is there any, like, big project that you have in mind? I know you're working on a biography that will come maybe in a few years, I hope. Yeah. We hope. 
Yeah. Is I there is so. anything to talk about? Yeah, I'm also working on four fragrances. Whoa. I just had a meeting yesterday. Diane Perne fragrances. Yeah, it's going to be called To Be Honest by Diane Perne. Wow, that's and amazing. And we just finalized. Can you smell this at all? This is one of them, the one that we. Yes, made. you were smelling yeah, it. I smelled it when you arrived. It's very yeah. beautiful. Because this is, I've been working on this since last December. And now it's, it's quite unisex also. Yes, that's important mm. to me. Because I hate wearing perfumes for women. I, I would like to life. wear it. Keep me a I'll bottle. Give you, I'll give you some when, it, when <laughs> we, we have to now work on figuring out the packaging. But a big black thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's something that With a mini veil on it. <laughs> I thought of like different things, like maybe a head that you could twist off. But I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't want it to look like, you know, Gautier, like a yeah, yeah. corset or something. I had thought, you know, this Ivo Bizanio had done a drawing of me that looked like a little sculpture. Yeah. It was quite beautiful. I thought, oh, it could be nice molded. But then I think maybe it's going to end up looking like Gautier or something. But I mean, this all look, how did it start it? I'm, I'm sure you're not born with it. When did you, when did you well start it? Well, I like it? to think, you know, yeah. you all came out of the womb with high hair and <laughs> a veil. You know, the whole family looks like that. But <laughs> in, fa <laughs> in fact, it's not true. I used to have flat hair yeah, and um, curly hair. It got straighter because I used to straighten it so much. Yeah, I saw very no. old pictures of you, like your beautiful long hair, like this. Well, I, well, I'm not as beautiful as your hair. Your hair is <laughs> like fantastic. My first collection as a designer was yeah. probably, uh, I think, n 1978 or 79, okay. before you were born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you. I was 10. But I was 10. Ah. <laughs> I was a child <laughs> prodigy. I was like Tavi, you know. I started my business, you know. And um, I've always been kind of height challenged. Okay. Because I'm five foot two. And I always felt I was meant to be taller. <laughs> so I wear very high platform <laughs> shoes. I and see. my hair sort of kept evolving. Okay. And um, I think. Like when I started designing, it was still flat. I kind of pushed it over to one side, kind of messy. Like I liked the idea of Anna Mignani just rolled out of bed look. Yeah. She's always been an icon for me, Anna okay. Mignani, although I don't look anything like her. And Sophia Loren. Uh -huh. it, 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 because you asked me about inspirations. Well, there aren't any direct inspirations. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a a bunch of things I like, but none of them are really look like what I look like. Yeah. You know, it could be Marie Antoinette, it could be Goya, it could be Anna Mignani, but then again, it's none of them, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. And the hair just kept rising. Yeah, tomorrow. yeah, I heard about that. No, we are very so excited. Yeah. I'll be there tomorrow, and uh, it's great. I wish you all the, the good luck, and uh, we will be looking for uh, all the projects and perfumes and dolls and everything. Great. And uh, yeah, good luck with everything. And yet. you're the best too. <laughs> Thank I've you so much for coming. I've never got to Antwerp without Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Great. darling. Thanks. It was Open the Gate. We hope to see you next week. Same day, same time. I, uh, I'm also a talent scout. But what interested me the most is making little intimate lo-fi films and uh, promoting um, young directors with my festival.